In this video, I'm going to show you the most asked questions at Dollar Tree interviews and help you plan good answers that will help you get a job at Dollar Tree. So let's look at a really important question that comes up all the time, which is simply, what times are you able to work at Dollar Tree? And they're going to be very interested in this answer. And to be successful in this, you need to say the things that they're interested in. And so the first thing you want to try and do is say yes to as much as possible. Remember, if they ask you about a certain time, it's because they're interested in that time and they want to hire people who say yes to it. The next thing is you want to have an open mind. So if you go into the interview and say, well, I'll never work that time and I can't work that time, then you're just giving them a list of reasons not to hire you. The next thing you want to show off lots of flexibility and fundamentally, you want to say what Dollar Tree needs. So if you own this location, what would you want people to say in the interview? And that's really what you're going to try and say. So I'm going to give you some suggestions of things that Dollar Tree really like to hear. And these are some of the best answers that you can give. And you can choose from this list and try and put together an answer that shows as much flexibility as you possibly can. So you could say if you've got br really brilliant flexibility, I would be able to work any hours within Dollar Tree store opening hours. So basically, you could work any time the store is open, potentially, and you can be extremely flexible. You might say, I would be open to overtime. You may never be offered any overtime, but it's good just to mention that because that shows that you are someone who can do extra. You could say, I'm happy to work to meet business needs. And you could say, I can work a mixture of day, evening, weekend, or weekday hours. And you want to show off as much flexibility as you possibly can. So these are really some of the best answers that you can give. You don't want to go into this question giving them a list of times that you can't work. You want to focus on the times that you can do rather than what you can't do. Every time you talk about something you can't do, you're giving them a reason to try not to hire you. So let's move on and look at the next one, which is what do you know about Dollar Tree? And they will expect you to come to the interview with good knowledge of the business. So you start with the basics in the middle of that diagram. Then you show that you're actually well prepared, that you've bothered to read about the company. And then what you want to do to be really successful is to exceed expectations, say things that they don't hear a lot of other people say. And for you, the good news is that I've planned a lot of your answer for you and I'm going to show you lots of facts and phrases that you can take to the interview. So if they ask this, the first thing that you can say is that it's a discount variety store chain. That's a simple, clear description of what their business does. You can then talk about how they provide great value and affordable products, which is the key to their business. They are well located. So when you look at where the stores are and where people live, they are very convenient. The company sells grocery and general merchandise and they have brands that they buy in and they also have what we call private label brands. So these are brands that you can only get at Dollar Tree and that are unique to them. They have a kind of treasure hunt environment, which is where the stock is constantly changing and different offers are coming in. So you can sometimes come in and get a fantastic offer and that brings people back into the store. And the key to their success is having highly skilled buyers. These are the people behind the scenes that negotiate with the suppliers to get really great prices and buy things in huge quantities. Because if Dollar Tree puts an order in and orders it for every single store in the country, this can be an absolutely enormous order and they can negotiate really, really good prices, which is one of the reasons why Dollar Tree is so competitive in terms of price. They have a national logistics network which can supply all of the stores regularly. They were originally founded by these three people. I would memorize um, their name because that's a good thing to talk about. If you can say those three names in the interview, that's going to show that you've actually done some research. The Dollar Tree brand itself started in 1989, but the company has some history before that. But 1989 is really the best number for when Dollar Tree started. They were pre previous to being Dollar Tree. They were the only $1 store, and that later evolved into Dollar Tree. They have taken over Family Dollar. So Family Dollar used to be a separate company, but the company has now bought it out, and they are now the same business. They have also have Dollar Tree Canada, so they've expanded into other markets and will probably be expanding even more. And they are now a Fortune 500 company as well. So Fortune 500 is a good thing to use to describe them. Another top tip is take some time to read Dollar Tree Inc.'s annual report. You don't need to read it word for word. Just open it up and have a flick through and just read, kind of skim reading and get a good impression of it because that will give you really up-to-date information about how the company's doing, what their strategy is, 
and lots and lots of information about the business that will really help you understand the company. So feel free to screenshot this, take any notes that you need, and you'll have a great answer ready for this one. The next one is a quite common question, which is what would you do if you knew an employee was stealing? And fundamentally, they're looking for firstly, the right answer, and you can be quite uh, vague. You don't have to say very, very, very specific things, answer it in very general terms, because that covers it much better. Then you want to show the right values. And if you do that, you get a good answer. So what they want to hear first is that stealing is completely unacceptable. So it's not okay to steal. And you have to be very, very clear on that because that's one of the values that they're testing. The next thing is you would say, I would follow any relevant training and Dollar Tree policies. That's what they want you to do. They don't want you to make up what you think you should do in this situation because every situation is different. If someone is an employee and you see them take something off the shelf and put it in their pocket and they're still in the store, that's one thing. If they put it in their pocket or walking out the store, that's another thing. There's lots and lots of different scenarios and you're not gonna talk about every single one to so talk about it in general. You would follow the training and all of the Dollar Tree policies. You would never ignore an employee stealing and you would report your concerns promptly, accurately and confidentially. So you're not going to go telling everyone in the store about what you've saw. It's going to go to the correct person and it's gonna be accurate and you're not going to delay in making that report. So that's what they want you to say. They want you to actually follow the store's policies and not just make up your own law enforcement policy that you're gonna follow because it's just you. Say this and that's gonna be a great answer. The next question that often comes up is, are you available on weekends? This is not difficult to answer. You would want to say, I would be available to work weekends when required. You might not be super happy about working weekends. This might not be ideal to you, but what you've got to remember is, they ask this for a reason. If you're an interview and they're saying, can you do weekends? It's because they want people to come and work weekends. So if you do say no, and that's your choice, if you do, it's going to hurt your chance of getting the job because they have asked this because they are interested in someone working weekends. So simple, that's what I would recommend. Then they might ask you, why do you want to join Dollar Tree? You know, why do you want to work here? And you have to have an answer ready for this. And what I would do is bullet point a simple answer. So have maybe five or six reasons and talk about those. And I'm going to give you a list of things you might want to say, and you can choose from these which match your interests. So definitely say you enjoy working in retail. That's really important. You could say I'm really good at providing good service. So if you've got previous experience, say that you've got that experience and you're good at doing that job. You could say that you've got positive employee experiences that you've heard, that you know people that work at the company and they've enjoyed working there and they've got positive things to say about it. You don't need to say exactly who these people are or identify them. You just say you know people who work at Dollar Tree and they've said positive things. If they've said how terrible it is and why you should never work there, then don't bring that up. You don't want to say anything negative about a company when you're interviewing. Now is not the time to bash the company. You could say something like they provide an essential service for my community. That's a nice phrase to use, that you're hoping to develop lots of new skills and that you've heard that Dollar Tree provides very good training and you see this as a great opportunity to develop. You could say that you're looking for an active and busy job. You don't want to be sitting behind a desk. You want to be up, moving around and busy. You could say that you enjoy working as part of a team, that you love working with customers and you want to join a growing company. Dollar Tree has historically grown very fast and is always adding new stores. And as a result, you think that there's going to be great opportunities to grow with the company. So as the company gets bigger, you're going to find more opportunities as the company grows. So pick maybe five or six of these and then discuss these as reasons why you want to work at Dollar Tree and you'll have a great answer to that one. They often ask, can you tell me about yourself? And a lot of people do terribly on this. They talk about things that are not important, not relevant, and they don't care about. So what you want to do is actually talk about what they want to hear. So they want to hear about your past. They want to hear you've got the right experience. They want to hear what you're like, what your skills are. How are you going to be good at the job? This whole point of this question is for you to explain to them that you're the right hire for them. And then talk about your future, why you actually want to work here. So for the past, very simple, focus on your retail experience. So anytime you've worked in a shop or perhaps even a restaurant where you're working with customers, working with the general public, that's your best experience. Then talk about wider experience. So mention every job that you've had that has got some experience that's gonna be useful to making you better at Dollar Tree. 
And then any training that you have done or any qualifications that you've got, now is a good time to mention it. So talk about what you've done in the past and always link it to how that's going to make you better at Dollar Tree. Then there's certain things they're looking for. So if you look at the job advert, they'll have listed what they're looking for an employee. And some of the things that you could say when you're telling me about yourself is you could say things like, I'm highly reliable. I've got an excellent attendance track record. I'm hardworking. I provide excellent customer service. I'm easy to work with. I'm a team player. I'm ambitious. I'm friendly and approachable. These sort of things are what they are looking for. And if you could maybe talk about three or four of those at least, you're showing that you've got the characteristics that they're looking for. You're pointing out that I am exactly the sort of person that you want to hire. Then for the future, think about why Dollar Tree, think about what we just went through in the last section, and maybe say a sentence about why you're really interested in working for Dollar Tree. Say that you love to work in retail, be really enthusiastic about it because they would rather employ someone who likes working in retail than someone who just does it because it's just a job. People who enjoy working in retail tend to be better employees. And then you could say, I see long-term career potential with Dollar Tree, if that's the case. If you think that you could join the company and you've got ambitions to perhaps move into management longer term, now is a good time to mention it, that you are ambitious and you can see that you could have a really great career with this company. And so all you do, talk about your experience, list some of those things that you have as characteristics, and then a brief mention of why Dollar Tree is the right place for you and you'll have a great strong answer and you'll be covering what they actually want to hear. So that's how you do that question. Another question they often ask about is how would you deal with a complaint or an irate customer or, or an angry customer? Some question about dealing with a difficult customer is quite common. And there's a simple process. I'm gonna tell you what sort of things you can say to get through this question. So you could say, firstly, do not make the situation worse. That's the mistake that people often make, that a customer's irate and then you end up making the customer more angry by your actions, where you just dismiss them, or you walk away from them, or you shout at them and argue back. All of these things just make things worse. So be clear in your interview that you do not make the situation worse. Then you say that you de-escalate. So you're going to remain calm. You're going to try and calm the customer down. You're going to show them that you're actually listening and you're taking them seriously. And that goes a long way to solving the problem. The next thing you say is that you would actively listen. And the reason you're actively listening is you're trying to understand exactly the issue causing the complaint because you can't do anything about a problem that you don't understand. So the customer may be really angry and start shouting three or four things at you that don't make any sense. And there's nothing that you can do with that information. So you need to listen more and really figure it out because without understanding the problem, you're never going to be able to fix it. Then you say that you would follow Dollar Tree's relevant policies. Just make it clear that you're going to follow the company's policies. Then say that you'd request management support if that was appropriate. And then you're going to say that you're going to resolve the customer's issue and restore customer satisfaction. That's how you finish off the um, answer. You just say you're going to restore the customer satisfaction. That's your ultimate goal is something's went wrong and your goal is to do something positive and make that customer happy again. Another great thing you can talk about, and it comes um, from Disney that did some research on this a long time ago, and they developed what's called the herd technique. So when you're dealing with a customer complaint, you hear their complaint, you empathize with them, you apologize if something's gone wrong, you resolve it. And then the last step is you diagnose. So if something is causing complaints to happen over and over and over again, maybe it's time to mention the manager that I'm getting a lot of complaints about this. Is there something that we can do about it? Or I've noticed that this is causing problems. Could we perhaps think about doing this? So you're being part of the solution and you are part of improving customer service at that Dollar Tree location. And so you are going above and beyond. And that's a really good thing to talk about. So talk about what's on here and you'll have a great answer. The next question that they often quite like to ask is kind of tell me about a time questions. And any question that starts with tell me about a time, you're going to use the STAR technique. So that's situation, task, action, and result. And every time you tell them about a time, you have to get a good result, a good positive result. And so what they want in this is a good explanation of how you could provide good service. And so a way to answer this is to think about in your experience, any time that a customer ever had a problem. Then think about how you fixed it. And that's gonna be a good answer. So customer has a problem, you come along and fix it, and there's your great answer. 
So I'm going to show you an example situation. This one is made up. You need to think very carefully about your experience and think about any time that you did something really good. And you'll be able to look at an example to see how to structure it. And I'm going to give you some inspiration of some situations that you may have come across that will help you think of a good example. So in my made up situation, we've got, I saw a customer in an aisle of a rural store I worked at who was clearly very angry about an item he needed being out of stock. And then you've got the task. So what have you got to do? Whenever I see that a customer needs aren't being met, I always look to solve the problem. Here I wanted to try and get an item for the customer. So the something's out of stock, you want to try and get that for them. And the other thing that's good about this answer is that you've spotted a problem. The customer hasn't come and approached you and asked for help. You've seen that someone needs help. You've saw a problem and you've went to fix it. So some of the best answers are where you do something proactive, that you don't wait for a problem to happen. You go straight in and come in with a solution. Then the action. I was sure that this item had arrived in our recent delivery and hadn't been put out yet. I approached the customer, talked with them, and promised to have a look for the item in the storeroom. So you've spotted a problem and you're going to try your best to solve it. And that's going to be hopefully appreciated by the customer. And then the result, and remember your result always has to be positive. I was able to find the item and the customer purchased it. A day later, a five-star review appeared online recalling the experience. So you've actually positively impacted the, the brand's perception. You've done a really great thing and you've made a customer happy by fixing their problem pro proactively. And that really is a brilliant answer. So let's think about some inspiration. You might think about any times where you've resolved a complaint or where a customer has been very difficult. And maybe that was an example of the irate customer that came in really angry, but actually you were able to fix everything and they left very happy. That's a really great um, example of where you've got a customer that's really angry at the brand. Everything's went wrong and their you know, expectations of you are very low, but you've been able to bring that back up that you've restored things. Anytime you've went above and beyond for a customer, or if a customer's ever said, you know, thank you very much for that, or thank you, that's a good way to jog your memory going, oh yeah, that's, I actually did really well there. So if a customer's thanked you for something, that's a clue that maybe that's a good example to use. So that's how you answer that one. And before we finish, here's some questions that you could ask Dollar Tree, and I'm also gonna say some things that you never ask them. So you might ask, could you tell me what the next steps are in your hiring process? You might ask, can you tell me more about the team that you've built here at this Dollar Tree? Find out how your job matches with that, how your job's going to fit in and who you're going to be working with and show a real interest in that. You could say, is there anything that you would recommend I do prior to starting? If successful, be well prepared. And if they suggest anything that you should do to be ready, make a commitment to do that. Show that you're really serious about being well prepared and you take your job seriously. You could ask, what do you personally enjoy most about working at Dollar Tree? And if they suggest things that they really enjoy, share in that enthusiasm, agree with them, and make that part of why you want to work there. And then lastly, offer sincere thanks and say that you look forward to hearing from them soon. And I also said there's certain things you must not ask about. So avoid asking about holidays, taking time off, delaying your start date by weeks, negotiating your pay. Now is not the time to enter into pay negotiations. Definitely not. Or talking about, I've applied to this store, but I really want to work in the next one three miles away. That's not going to be a good point because they're hiring for this location. So don't ask about transfers. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and post in the comments what questions Dollar Tree asked you. And finally, thank you very much for watching.